So you made up your mind to get long travel IFS for your Toyota. The next question is, which one should you get? And are there any real world differences between the options? In this video, we'll get nerdy into the technical details and compare two popular long travel kits. In the end, you know better what to look for for your selection. And spoiler alert, there are probably more differences than you think. And let's get started. Hi, welcome to Tinker's Adventure, I'm Kai. Behind me is my 2013 FJ Cruiser. It shares mostly the same front suspension as other Toyota 120 and 150 platform vehicles. Today, we will have an in-depth comparison between the Camber and Dirt King plus 3.5 long travel kits. They are both very reputable manufacturers, and in my opinion, their design features encompass most major models on the market. So even if you didn't buy either of these two, you still gain a lot of insights on what to look for. Of course, there are more complex setups such as the LSK Plus 4 and 5 kit and the new and unique Modeling Crawler RCLT. Those all utilize custom fabricated steering knuckles. Sky's the limit when you build a highly custom truck. So to draw the line, we will only consider the setups that reuse the factory steering knuckles. To keep this comparison organized, I will split it into four sections. Actual wheel travel achieved, lower control arm design, upper control arm design, and at last, integration with the whole vehicle, how all components fit and work together as a whole. First up, let's cycle some suspension. To cycle the suspension, I removed the coilover so I can jack up the tire with my hydraulic table. I also removed the limit straps and bump stops so we can see the hard limits of the control arms themselves. On their website, Camber claims 15 inches of wheel travel on two-wheel drive and 14 on four-wheel drive, which is probably the highest claim in its class. Dirt King, on the other hand, claims only 13 and a half inch, which is on par with the rest. In my measurement, for camber, the full droop is limited by the upper control arm univol angle. At full bump, it is the univol cup hitting the inner wheel well. My particular CV axles used on the camber kit did not bind throughout the travel. So technically, we should expect 15 inches claimed for two-wheel drive. But we only got about 13 and 3 16 Another note is the alignment can actually affect the uniform angle, which directly impacts the amount of droop. Here we shift both lower control arm bushings maximum inward, and you can see the uniball is no longer binding. From this, we gain a little more droop and the total travel number increased to 13 and a half inches. But this will result in positive camber in your wheel alignment, so it is not a realistic option. Camber's claim of 15 inches probably include custom fabricated inner wheel well or some body lift to gain a little bit of up travel. On the Dirt King side, similar to camber, the full droop is limited by the upper control arm uniball angle and full bump is by the uniball cup. We measured 13 and 3 8 inches of travel at nominal alignment. When we shifted both alignment bolts maximum inwards, that number increased to 13 and 11 16. In conclusion, both kits achieve similar amount of travel. The slight difference in what I measure is by no means a decision maker, so I'll call this a tie. And after proper limit strap, bump stop, alignment, and assuming you made enough clearance for your tires, you can expect around 12 and a half to 13 inches of clean, reliable travel from either kits. And if you want to go the extra mile, there's some potential to squeeze a little more up travel, like I mentioned. However, I don't think it's possible to squeeze any more down travel from either of these two kits. Both lower control arms has the exact same length, 
which is exactly 3.50 inches longer than factory. The most obvious difference is how the lower arm attaches to the steering knuckle. Camber uses a uniball adapter and the lower control arm goes under the uniball joint. So it actually has less ground clearance than factory. Third King on the other hand uses the factory ball joint cradle so the lower arm goes above the joint. As a result, it has a similar or slightly better ground clearance than factory. Here are some pictures showing the ground clearance difference at right height. From my measurements, Dirk King's lower arm sits 0.8 inch higher at the coilover and 2.8 inches higher near the tire. For high speed off road, ground clearance in this area is probably not as significant as it's very close to and moves up and down with the wheel. But I can testify for rock crawling, you want every bit of ground clearance anywhere under your truck. As you can see, I dig hung up here often. The one thing both design did right is this slanted front surface. It helps sliding over rocks easier, which is pretty much inevitable. Some manufacturer has straight corners on this leading edge. Those probably simplify fabrication, but not ideal for rock crawling. Another key difference caused by the uniball attachment is how this bolt joint is loaded. To illustrate this, I loosen the nut and load up the tire. Let's see how each design behaves. For Third King, it attaches the same way as factory, so this joint is normally under compression. The force on the tire is actually compressing the joint together. The bolt is just keeping the parts from shifting. On the other hand, Camber's lower arm attaches below the uniball, so the joint is normally under tension. The wheel pushes the steering knuckle upwards, and the coilover pushes the lower control arm downward. All the load is trying to separate the bolt from the nut. My Camber kit is about 5 years old. I do have the habit to check all the critical bolts whenever I do my tire rotation on the lift. This nut on mine did came loose and I was extremely lucky to catch it before it totally separates. Otherwise my suspension will have completely collapsed. When I replaced all the hardware, I found out Camber upgraded their design with the $50 piece mill spec bolt and an aggressive Stover lock nut. This type of lock nut have deformed threads and takes 50 foot pounds just to thread onto the bolt. They specified red Loctite on top of the Stover nut and torqued to 165 foot pounds. Although it may get pretty tough to take this bolt off to replace the Uniball, I do believe this latest hardware should have sufficient design margin to mitigate its inherent risk. Moving towards the frame, we will see some key differences at the frame pivots. Most manufacturers use polyurethane bushings, but neither of these two does. Camber utilizes 1 inch uniballs, whereas Third King uses dowel bushings with the same steel inner sleeves. Both joints are much stiffer than the typical polyurethane bushings, so they can reduce control arm deflections for tighter handling. Since the control arm is now 25% longer than factory, the wheel force in this front and back direction had 25% more leverage to deflect these frame pivots. So it makes sense to have a stiffer joint for these pivots. However, there is a key advantage to Camber's uniball that is allowing a wider range of wheel alignment. Camber's uniball design allows us to move the front pivot all the way inwards and the rear pivots all the way outwards, thus shifting the wheels and tires forward by 5 eighths of an inch. On Third King's side, the dowel bushings are very rigid. I could feel a lot of resistance and they kept bouncing back to a more neutral position. I might be able to get max adjustment with a lot of brute force, but that will put these bushings under constant binding and might make them wear out prematurely. And I know everyone's trying to squeeze that last sixteenth of an inch to clear those 35s or 37s. So it seems camber for the win being able to shift the wheel all the way forward through alignment. However, here comes the plot twist. Third King lower arm is actually designed half an inch forward nominally, whereas Camber 
has the same front and back wheel position as factory. So in the end, I would say Dirt King actually have a slight advantage on wheel placement to clear larger tires. Last but not least, although using univalves at the frame pivots are better at preventing binding, it presents some maintenance challenges. Unlike the outer univalves, these have deep univalve cups and are covered by these frame brackets, especially the front one. It was almost impossible to clean. The first difference between the two is Camber uses one and a quarter univalves, while Dirt King uses one inch ones. One and a quarter univalves are indeed rated for a higher load, but they both reduce to the same size bolt to fit the factory spindle. This bolt is the weakest link, so a larger univalve does not have a strength advantage here. With the proper misalignment spacers, the one and a quarter univalves do allow more angle. However, we saw Dirt King with the 1 inch ball yield just as much droop. That was because Dirt King strategically angled their univalve cup upwards to use the full range of angle. Camberg is also angled upwards, but not nearly as much, so it is leaving some untapped potential of the larger univalve. If you are considering other manufacturers, look at how the univalve cup is angled on their upper control arm. This will give you a rough idea who may have more droop. This is also why the more complex long travel setups replace the factory spindle with one that has a vertical univalve to achieve more droop. Another big difference between the upper control arm is the actual shape of the arm. You can see Camber's univalve is positioned much more backwards, creating a higher positive caster. So is more caster better? Let's get into the next section and see how it all plays out. So let's come back to the topic of wheel placement and wheel alignment. Our goal is to move the wheel forward to clear large tires, and we saw both design can achieve this by a decent amount. However, due to Camber's high caster upper control arm, I ended up with around 6 degrees of caster to barely clear my 35 inch tires. Caster provides the self-centering force for steering. Not enough caster can cause wandering on highway, but too much caster can cause high steering effort and will wear you out over long distance driving. From my experience, over five degrees will start to become not highway friendly. So this is something to consider if you do plan to drive long highway distances. Some experienced viewer might point out, why can't I just adjust the hind joints on my upper control arm to reduce the caster while still push the wheel forward. That sounds feasible in theory, but on my particular setup, I ran out of threads before getting to where I want to be. These adjustments also affect camber and caster simultaneously. To keep my camber in check, I couldn't adjust the lower arm all the way forward. Therefore, I still have tire rub near full compression. On the third king side, both upper arm and the lower arm are shifted forward together, so you move the tire forward without introducing higher caster. On my setup, without messing with the upper control arm hind joints, I was able to get 3.5 degree caster, which is pretty reasonable. In my recent 4300 miles round trip from Pennsylvania to Moab, Utah, this alignment handles significantly more pleasant and I never had any tire rub when I flex on the Moab Slick Rock. To complete a four-wheel drive long travel setup, you need to extend the CV axles. Both manufacturers offer extended axle shafts for the factory CV joints. Although I don't run them on my FJ, I found Camber and Dirt King took different approaches on their axle shaft design. But before comparing what they did, Let's first look at what problem they tried to solve. To achieve the advertised suspension travel, these long travel kits have to operate the axle to a higher angle. And because of those higher angle, at full droop, the axle shaft will actually contact the lip on the inner joint housing, causing it to bind. To solve this issue, Dirt King provides instructions to grind off some material from this lip. They also specified running one inch diff strap to achieve the full droop. Camber, on the other hand, make their shafts only plus two and seven eighths longer than factory, 
instead of the full three and a half like Dark King. The shorter shaft pulls the inner joint outwards, allowing more clearance at the lip. To me, Camber's solution appears more elegant. However, in theory, a shorter shaft means the joint will operate at a slightly higher angle. Unfortunately, I do not have first-hand experience to make further assessment. Nevertheless, both manufacturers do their due diligence to design their axle shaft properly and give the customer a full solution. Most other manufacturers simply extended their axle shaft by three and a half inches and say nothing about it, leaving the customer to figure out on their own. In most cases, the customer will just settle with less down travel by setting the limit strap higher. Continuing on the topic of CV axles, on high clearance design like Dirt King, the outer CV joints can get very close to the lower arm if you manage to get a lot of droop. Multiple friends of mine who ran other brands long travel kits reported their CV boot or clamp made contact with the lower arm. The solution will have to reduce the down travel by setting the limit strap higher. As of today, Dirt King is the only brand I know who include these 3 8 inch spacers to resolve that clearance issue. Durkin also told me these spacers further reduce bump steers. Camber, on the other hand, has tons of clearance around the outer CV joint. This is the only way to run these massive Data60 RCV joints. These joints have the puncture-resistant spherical seal CV boot, which some people may prefer over the traditional boots. In summary, I swap out my 5-year-old Camber setup for the Dirt King because the Dirt King fits my needs better. I do mostly slow rock crawling trails, and I like to drive long distances to explore those new trails. On the other hand, Camber may be preferred for high speed racing. Its lower arm is noticeably beefier everywhere, it has rigid bind free uniball frame pivots, and allow running the larger outer CV joints. In the end, both manufacturers have top quality and service among the competition. For a mod this expensive and involved, customer service is just as important as the design themselves. Thank you for staying all the way to the end. I hope this video helped you learn a little more about Toyota Long Travel Kit. If you are still not sure Long Travel is the right route for your build, and you are more curious about how Long Travel compares to the factory with setup, please let me know in the comment below. I may be able to do a video similar to this one comparing long travel and factory width setup. Also, if you want to see how my long travel setup flags off-road, you definitely want to subscribe because we have a lot more videos coming. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below.